Hey everyone, before we start the show, we just want to let you know that you still have a chance to earn a $60 gift card for GameStop or Amazon that goes towards WWE 2K16. You can enter your chance to win by going to bitethat.com forward slash WWE 2K16. You have until October 20th and the winner will be announced on the October 20th edition of the podcast. Remember that's Bite That dot com forward slash WWE 2K16 to earn your chance to win a $60 gift card towards WWE 2K16. On this episode, we talk about the state of the WWE, Summer Rae proposing to Rusev, John Cena versus Dolph Ziggler, the authorities roll on TV, NXT TakeOver, your questions, and tons more right now on Bite That. Hey gang, what is going on? You're listening to episode 111 of Bite That's Weekly Wrestling Podcast, the place where we sit down and we talk about sweaty men in spandex regarding the WWE, the network, all of that sexy stuff that happens every single week. We cover it here. Remember to check out the podcast every single Tuesday night as Keith is just, listen, listen to that soothing voice that you can listen to every single Tuesday night on iTunes, Stitcher, TunaRadio, ByteThat.com, and of course, if you want more of that sexy licious voice you go over to yeah. our youtube channel youtube.com forward slash bite that cast where we not just have the podcast we have things like discussion videos and all of those discussion great things videos. now before great i introduce things. that voice my name is juan <laughs> velas i am from san juan puerto rico and i gotta get him out of the way now keith just just keep talking just just go Oh, you want me to use my like real voice now? Are we are we kicking it up a notch? I guess, yeah. All right. Well, hi. How are hi. you today, good sir? Doing good, man. Doing yeah. good. Ready to talk about some good old fashioned wrestling? Yeah. Let me, me just, too. Let me just get this other guy out of the way then. Ryan from Boston. What up? Not too much, man. Welcome you know, to the show. Yeah. You know, Monday Night Raw. Feels good was, to be here. Was in Boston this Monday, but and you weren't there. I was not there. <laughs> Uh, interesting fact, though, is uh, I do drive on that bridge right behind where they did that little Sasha Banks, Nikki Bella segment. So I was like, I looked at, the, you know, the the time of day. It looked like I was like, hmm, I wonder if I drove by while they were filming that segment. Um, because uh, I didn't even think to go, like, look and see if I could see the WWE trucks or whatever. It totally, like, went past my mind. But it's kind of cool. They filmed it. I think it, like, you would where, know. You know, I drive by I there every day. I think you would know. So... With everything that you saw on Raw, were you glad that you didn't go, or do you wish you had been there? Uh, considering the price of tickets and the quality of this episode of Monday Night Raw, <laughs> I'd say I made the correct choice by not going. What does a ticket go for, roughly, if you know? Um, They were at least, like, over $100 for, like, decent seats. Um, Like, they're getting to, like, pay-per-view level prices for Raw. And granted, Raw has not been in the TD Garden itself in a number of years. I don't think since, like, basically before WrestleMania 28 have they done a Raw at the actual TD Garden. Interesting. So, Ryan, you mentioned that based on the quality of the show, we've been at this for a couple of weeks, and... It seems that consistently people are just saying, I'm watching this out of habit, and it's not to get all negative uh, Nancy here, but is there anything that you can just go look at the show and think to yourself, I got my money's worth, or at least I got my time's worth on this Raw? Just one thing, at least. I mean, I've been asking that for like four years, and (laughs) I still don't have a good answer for that. At least if we're going for, like, bang for your buck segment, uh, the New Day is always giving you your money's worth for the time that they are on screen. That is about the one consistent thing. That in any time Paul Heyman is cutting a promo, most of it, well, I shouldn't say any time because the big show build up stuff, eh. But any time it's was Brock it Lesnar and Paul Heyman building up a feud, it's also your money's worth. Did you guys have a chance to check out WWE MSG? I did. I watched, I I skimmed through it to kind of just see what I wanted to see. I did not watch the whole show. Yeah, same. Uh, I just wanted to get some overall impressions because, of course, some of those things did lead up to Raw and one of the topics that I want to bring up. So 
what, was there anything like Beast in the East for you guys where that show obviously was in a different country, different style, but this very much just felt like a like a special Raw, at least for me. That's actually exactly what I was going to point out is that the feel was very different from Beast in the East. I kind of enjoyed the whole intimate, different feel of Beast in the East where this really did just feel like Raw without the label Raw everywhere on the show. Um, the comment, like the commentary desk was there and like the stage was done up and just the, the camera angles and everything. The Beast in the East just felt a little more house showy, although this definitely content wise still felt like a house show. I agree. I think Beast in the East was the, a way better show uh, opposed to the MSG special. It almost to me felt like it was raw, but it was a raw that we complain about all the parts of raw about like. We like Raw for the stories, right? We don't like, uh, we kind of, the matches Screw are kind of Screw those matches. Like, yeah, but I mean, let's be real here for a moment. We, we've we said on the show before, the matches belong on the pay-per-views, the stories belong on the Raw, right? So the MSG special kind of felt like, oh, hey, here's an episode of Raw, but all the stuff you like about Raw doesn't exist at all on it. Now, there was a couple of good matches, like I enjoyed the... Uh, the, the cage match between uh, John Cena and Seth Rollins I thought was pretty good. Yeah, it was good. And the, um, I don't know, what did you guys think about the Intercontinental title match? Because I've seen a lot of people like poo-poo it a little bit, but I thought it was actually pretty good. I, I thought think it was people, a forgettable match. Yeah, I think people really? were very hyped up expecting this like barn burner of a match where um, it was just a solid match. You know, I don't think they're going to just like go ham at, at a house show, you know? Keith, a couple of weeks ago, you even mentioned that during Raw, a lot of the matches just tend to be good. There's always that, that at least one redeeming, uh, you know, just great or at least very good match happening. So with mm-hmm. this, it was like, yeah, I think it was a good match, but I already get that on Mondays, at least once uh, every few Mondays. And uh, considering the, the hype or the build that this had it's when you sort of realize this is still a house show match because as we've talked about it multiple times, a match without a story is just a match. And I can watch that on Superstars. I can watch main event for a random match if I want. But something like Kevin Owens versus a Cruz Jericho, I like to see that be a feud, not just, hey, there was this match. And it is interesting how we get a house show match with commentary. I will say that much. Because obviously it's a bigger challenge for them even because there's not that much of a story to really go on. True. That's a very good point. So the topic that I wanted to bring up, and it segues a little bit into some things that happen on Raw. We had Lesnar versus Big Show at WWE MSG, which for me, just my quick little review on that, I think that match was exactly what it should have been. It was short. It established a reason to want the Big Show to be beaten by Brock Lesnar. The same thing happened on Raw. Now, the buildup for the match in the very short amount of time that they had it, I think was cool, though, because we talked about how WWE sometimes forgets the past. And they did mention the Royal Rumble thing in an interview with Big Show. But just, you know, these video packages acknowledging all these accolades, all these great things that everybody has done. And uh, I wanted to sort of bring this to the table where do you guys think that the WWE should do this more? You have a guy like Randy Orton on the roster who's just randomly teaming up with Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. A lot of people never got to see Legend Killer Randy. Think about that. That to us is like perfectly That's normal. That's crazy, but yeah, you're absolutely right. So should they do something more like this with the guys that do have that history? They can do that to an extent. Like, I mean, the way that they're doing the, the Lesnar show thing was good because they have like this history of a feud. Although... It does feel weird when they really gloss over 2014, the Royal Rumble match, because it's like Lesnar just stomped him and now they're going to pretend like that wasn't a big deal. I mean, that's, you know, I think 2014 is slightly more relevant than 2003 and 2004. Let's (laughs) let's all be real here. Big Show and uh, Brock Lesnar are kind of totally different animals at this point in time. And but there's things like. You know, like you said, with Randy Orton teaming up with Ambrose and Reigns, things like that where people have feuded with each other before and are teaming up and stuff. That's just something that kind of eventually just has to be ignored because otherwise you're going to run out. Everyone's going to run out of teammates and opponents and everything. Exactly. It seems like a good idea in theory, but 
the first thing I think of uh, when I like start thinking about it is, oh, this is going to be something that the fans ruin because there's always going to be that people like, oh, remember this and you brought up this, but you're not going to bring up this. It just seems like it's almost a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. But isn't it funny how in boxing or UFC, that's a common thing. Of course, I know I'm doing the whole sports versus sports entertainment thing, but a lot of times those video packages of something that happens on a previous fight is good enough to sell a future fight. Yet in wrestling, I think that can happen. But you brought up a pretty good point, Keith, where can you realistically satisfy a massive part of the audience when, uh, you know, you get the Goldberg chance with Ryback and the Husky Harris chance for, for a little bit with Bray Wyatt? Plus, I think the difference between wrestling and those things are that if you're if you're trying to build up a UFC fight, their previous matches, if there is anything, that is the story. It's the revenge thing. With WWE, they try to go down much different angles because it's sports entertainment and they have that luxury. They have a little more to build off of like beyond, oh, football team A faced football team B and football team A beat the hell out of them last time. What more can a game really base a story off of? If anything, sport, at least in the buildup of a match or a uh a game or something. I think sports sort of borrows more from wrestling. Like they kind of, you know, they uh, fabricate these kind of stories or make them play them up way bigger than they actually are. And a lot of times with sports, you'll see uh, a lot of the players will kind of downplay what the media is trying to build up for, for something like this. Um, Yeah. Wrestling. It's like, you can kind of make the story however you want to. So they have that benefit. I think that's sort of the, I guess the the in between of the next topic I wanted to bring up, which is sort of just raw as a whole. Ryan, you had a really good video on the weekend. It was like a 10 minute video talking about the, of course it was. I mean, hey, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, So you talked about the ratings going down and basically different ways that it can change. And it got me thinking. I wanted to bring up just a, a reaction on that. And you just brought up with the sports how, you know, the media can do whatever it wants. The the sports person can just put that down if he wants, like a Floyd uh, Money Mayweather uh, or something like that. Wrestlers should be more human. Shouldn't they be like they they should be prone to errors. They should be prone to questions. Well, we know uh, Sin Cara is prone to those, but. <laughs> well, yeah, but I guess the point that I'm trying to say is this. It feels like WWE is so standardized, and we've talked about this in the past, to the point where I just can't believe that Kevin Owens can really do whatever he wants, because his character is very much laid back, that type of thing. And Bray Wyatt, you look at a guy like Bray Wyatt, it's like, why isn't he randomly interfering on another feud for no reason? It it seems so, like, segment one does this. Well, according to you, they're like the same person, so. (laughs) Everything feels, I think I know where you're trying to get at, where everything feels so structured. I think CM Punk was like that last guy who felt like he was outside the rules. You know what I mean? Where he just did whatever he wanted. And it felt like he was doing what he wanted because he wanted to. Uh, A lot of these characters, they, and I think that's partly due to the whole heavily scriptedness of the show. You know, Austin talks about this all the time where, you know, he wants people to just be themselves and they're not, everyone's so overproduced that, you know, they're true personality isn't shining i was watching survivor series 2003 over the weekend and that there was a survivor series uh five on five match team bischoff versus team austin and something that, that was I loved a really about that, good match yeah that was an excellent match because they were all human beings like at some points so, uh, the, a face would do a slight heel tactic but it was because they wanted to beat the crap out of the other person. It's not like, oh, you know, the face can't beat the bad guy down because then he's like a tweener. It's like just have the person commit errors, commit mistakes, wrestle how, you know, uh, how that person should be. Uh, just the odd example. It almost feels like, Ryan, if you were if you wanted to go into a wrestling ring, you were probably marked out if they told you to go to Raw, right? Like your first thing would be like, go crazy or something. It feels like if you actually did do that, they would just cut so much of that out that you end up going into the ring like, um, hi. And that's not you. I want to be able to see more of the people behind the characters on Raw. And I think that is what is legitimately missing. I don't know if I'm alone in this, but do you guys sort of get it's I know it's not necessarily a clear point, but it's because something I keep thinking about. 
Like, I think I'm getting to the point. I, I think that's yeah, what WWE needs. Yeah, feels real. It's very robotic and systematic. Yeah. I think you're right. But at the same time, I also think you need to cut things like social media out of the equation to oh, make that work. Because if they were themselves, but they were themselves for that two hour chunk, they could almost have the best of both worlds where they're these superhuman people, but still your normal, regular, everyday normal guy. I think it goes back to how social media is really the problem here. I, I think the heavily scripted nature of Raw is the problem. When I see Ryback and he's looking at a 45 degree angle and he's clearly reading from a cue card, I don't really feel like that's Ryback. Or even like Seth Rollins, as great as he is, like it, there's something just not quite there. It's not, it doesn't feel like him as much as I feel like it should. You know, like I said, I, I honestly think, um, you know, Cena is a guy who actually, when he goes out there, you know what? I actually feel like that's him, but obviously that's, he yep. is the guy and has free reign to do a lot more than everyone else can. But, but even just a quick example there that I wanted to bring up quickly, you say Cena is just him, right? In the mm -hmm. segment where, you know, they're talking about, uh, Susan G. Komen, et cetera. He knew right off the bat that people were going to maybe do some Cena sucks uh, stuff. So, but the way he said, it, it's like, you guys are going to get your moment. It feels like nobody else could ever say something like that. They would either not be allowed or you just don't see that on TV. Mm -hmm. Just a guy randomly said like, yeah, you're going to get your break. It's like you're almost breaking kayfabe in, in, in some sort of way because well, he's just acknowledging just that. How Roman Reigns talked in that segment versus Cena, you know, that was oh, exactly okay. right there. Can we can we talk about how and, and I know we're sort of all over the place in this episode. And I think this is the moment to really have this type of just, you know, random thing, because there is a legitimate concern about what is happening with the WWE. And uh, I believe Stone Cold in his podcast talked about this. So of course, we do have the Susan G. Komen thing happening, which, you know, there is some controversy. We've talked about that in the past. That's not the topic here. But you have Seth Rollins with a Rise Above Cancer uh, shirt that is basically a take on the John Cena shirt. If it were up to me, it's just, just give him a customized Seth Rollins cancer shirt. And I'd be like, okay, cool. But it's the little details where it's like, you want to be this character, but then Roman Reigns goes out there and sounds like somebody completely else on the same show. This is not the post-Raw panel or something. This is still Raw. So bear with me here. You should just should not, I he not be confused. Why does Seth Rollins have to wear the shirt? All right, I get, you know, they have the rope. They have the ramp. John Cena does the segment. Like, I'm not trying to put down the whole thing. I'm just saying, like, why does the top heel need to wear the shirt? You can have all the baby faces do it. I don't think I don't think it uh, like it affects anything any less if Seth Rollins isn't wearing a shirt. You know, I feel like nothing changes except that. I don't know. The fact that it is based off a of John Cena shirt. He just had a feud with John Cena. He just faced him in a cage match. Exactly. Two nights ago, two or three nights ago. And, and didn't Seth his Rollins shirt. have a shirt that mocked John yeah, Cena's shirt yeah, a little bit? Shirt. Oh, God, wrestling's great. And just the, <laughs> the final thing I want to bring up with this, even in that situation, logically, and I know saying the word logic here, you know, is uh, like a controversial thing. It's a dirty, it's a dirty word, dirty yeah. word. Wrestling, my friend. But it's shouldn't he word. at least make reference to the fact that he's wearing a shirt that is a spinoff of a Cena shirt? Yet, for some reason, it's like he's just wearing it. It's just convenience. You say it every week, Ryan. Uh, so I guess I, w I really do want to take this to everybody listening. Do you think that we're just either babbling on or we really are onto something in the way that they need to choose? What are they? Whatever the case, if their audience is children and that's it, cool. But then make up your mind so we can make up our minds. And I won't go into detail, but one final bullet point I'd like to add to this is Stephanie McMahon. And we yes. Move on. So getting to that for uh, a couple of minutes, the next topic actually was the authority getting to more specific oh, things that like are happening. on Raw. Yeah, <laughs> we do have that. <laughs> so Stephanie McMahon was backstage with the New Day. She was involved in multiple segments and uh, she just randomly announced the rematch New Day versus Dudley Boys happening at Hell in a Cell. And it got me thinking. So. What have the authority become? What what are they realistically right now? Are they just the general managers, but just labeled differently? 
And do they even belong there? What do you guys think? They've sort of just become like the hype people or I don't know. They've become more themselves in the way that they're 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 not like as heel like and they're just kind of hyping things up and announcing things. I don't know. Being more corporate, but less heel. Is that possible? Do you guys think they have a goal? Like one goal no. at all. Yeah, all the the whole goal motivation thing, like it all made sense with Daniel Bryan and that whole storyline. That wasn't even supposed to happen to begin with. But like that all made sense when they were keeping people down and even John Cena and things like that. Now they've just kind of faded to a point where they only really give uh like Seth Rollins crap and he's supposed to be their like their ally. I think we can basically boil down this entire podcast into one word and that's routine everything has just become routine just the same thing playing out over and over again and i think the authority is the exact same thing at this point i think the only difference here is like you said Juan, they they're heel one week and then they're face the next week like when stephanie mcmahon came out and the she pandered to the crowd like normally that would be some great like, pandering though for tom brady i mean come on yeah I mean, she, <laughs> she I, played. that is the one pandering i will just bask in that okay but normally normally something like stephanie would do that and then completely just crap on them right but there was none of that she was playing a face out there making like the big championship match and then pandering to the crowd and then just went away and then maybe she'll come out next week heel like how are we supposed to know it's there's no the there's one no thing that is a potential possibility is that they're kind of fading the authority back to kind of being baby faces so that it can better transition into like a Rollins Triple H feud potentially so that Triple H is the baby face in it. But why would Triple H be the baby face in that feud? And that why should that even zero happen, sense. honestly, at this point? You, I actually, I do want to see Triple H versus Seth Rollins. See, I, I agree with you, but I can't let you get past this the whole baby face thing. Why would Triple H be the baby why face Why wouldn't in that he be? Feud? They've been building Seth Rollins as like their top heel. Would they just throw that away? Is he, uh, okay. Ryan, question specifically for you. Is Seth Rollins the top heel or the best heel? That's a good question. He is the top heel. Why? Do we even have do we even have good heels? Let's be honest. The New Day are entertaining as hell, but are they good heels? Probably not. They're way too entertain they're like not I don't know if entertaining is the right word, but like they're way too likable to be. I would the best honestly heels. say that the top heel is Seth Rollins, yes, but the best heel they have is Triple H. Yeah, because think about this, Ryan. Realistically, nothing against Rollins because we have been praising him for a very long time. But it's after Rollins, what is there? And after Cena, what is there? It's getting to the point now specifically. You look at Raw. You had the match with Randy, uh, Ambrose, and Reigns. And all three of them seemed at the same level. And that should be a huge problem. That should be a huge issue when you have one guy that has a 10 year plus career, another guy that is a descendant of the Samoan family and was the top guy at WrestleMania, and then the other guy that people have been really wanting to just see go up. The other guy's but the titty master. What more do you have to say? Exactly. And that. And they're all just there. It, that it didn't is, feel that is anything. The story of WWE right now is there's so many people that are just there. Like, who do you honestly feel like besides Seth Rollins in the last year that's truly significantly moved up the card in a meaningful Nobody. way? Nobody. This Nobody. is people who have been around for more than a year. Not I know like Kevin Owens kind of shot himself up into a, a good, a decent position, but he hasn't even been around that long. So he hasn't. It's not like you can say this is a guy who last year was here and this year, this year has been elevated so much further. Who who besides Rollins? Everyone else is like in the exact same spot. Or have moved down. No, in another example, the match I just mentioned. Last week, the show closed out with Reigns versus Wyatt. And in this show, it was kind of like, oh, so we're going to keep the storyline going because we got another three weeks. It's like, you went from the main event to just another match in the show. Once again, make up your mind. Should I care about this a lot or not at all? I don't know because apparently... and and, and I do like the fact, I'm going to point this out. This is like a meta or something. I don't think we're being negative about the show because we are bringing up legitimate things that 
we we do like because you said it in your uh, your video this weekend, Ryan. This is probably the best roster that the WWE has had in years in terms of talent. So we're not saying like uh, we don't have a Rene Dupree. No offense to that guy, but there were people <laughs> at some points in the company where you're like, yeah, Kenzo Suzuki, no, Sylvain Grane, no. They're just guys that Vladimir didn't work. Kozlov. Yeah, Vladimir. You have no, people that Lester Turk. I really think this is as far as in ring talent, this is like by far the most talented roster ever. Agreed. And I don't think anybody can argue that. But the solid thing that's missing right now is the one guy. And I think right now is a big uh is a big showing point that it doesn't matter how stacked your roster is. It needs it like wrestling only needs that one person, that one huge person to make the show. And we just need more personality. There was one brief highlight from that that six man tag match with uh, Reigns and not that it was a bad match or anything. But one thing I really liked because I was sitting there thinking it and then it happened. Like as that match started, Reigns started in the match and I think he was against Luke Harper. Right. And I and I immediately was thinking, you know, Reigns is about to go in a Hell in a Cell match against Bray Wyatt. Like, why aren't I feeling like any animosity? But then just as I thought that, like Reigns just like forgot about Harper and went right after Wyatt. And I was like, yeah, that was a good touch. Nice. We need to see more of this. Like, this makes sense. Like it, it feel the feud is starting to feel real, you know. And let's just so hope think it doesn't grow cold. We need to see personality on the show yes uh, okay. roman reigns guide us to the promised land okay now guys we are going to talk about a ton of personality with the next thing we have so let's bring it back to that storyline that we love to bring up every week oh good i need to use the washroom anyway <laughs> <laughs> Keith, don't, hey don't leave he's he he's left. legitimately, he legitimately left okay so right let's have this conversation okay Rusev, wow, he's gone. So Rusev, kidding around, anything, I anything you want to say about Keith quickly? Like, I mean, he's gonna edit it out, but just any comment about him as a person? Um, questionable at best. Yeah, one out of ten. We'll not date again. So Rusev and uh, Summer Rae. So we have this awkward. I kind of get where they were going segment where Summer Rae proposes to rusev what is with females proposing in wwe you know just a couple years ago we had aj proposing to cm punk i guess that's their, maybe their way of being edgy but i do want to actually talk I about think this i one. actually okay. said yes hey, to my is back. it's like because it's like a like a neck beard fantasy or Yay. something <laughs> yeah but okay so keith i want to bring it to you directly so talking serious here the summer a segment where she proposed to rusev yes do you think that was something that the feud needed? I mean, it was it was awkward to me because it it still feels like they're forcing this feud, even though Lana does have a following. I mean, you heard the crowd, so they are invested somewhat into this uh, storyline. But what about you? I think this feud needs one thing and one thing only, and that's a a bullet to end it. <laughs> like, I don't understand why this is still going on. Like, is Dolph Ziggler even involved in this anymore? Cause he kind of did different things in the main event. Like now it's just kind of Lana. He Rusev, is. And I Summer. think Ziggler is out of that storyline. Yeah, completely. I mean, he was taken out at the end of raw with that U S open challenge, which by the way, in kayfabe, the main event was Ziggler as like the super special challenger, which would have been disappointing. Uh, but then we had him being taken Man, out. And what a depressing sentence you just said. How Ziggler like challenging for a championship is disappointing. Honestly? I know we wouldn't have thought that yeah. uh, not too long ago. But hey, <laughs> all right. My feelings on this Lana Rusev thing, you know, just as I thought that they were going to fade away one of the greatest storylines ever. They they pumped it back to life they went by deeper, having Lana deeper. propose to Rusev, and he said yes. Right, they of. were literally committing sort of. to the storyline. I know, and they're they're gonna tie the knot. Oh my oh god! My god. <laughs> um, if if Rusev wins a championship, was that the terms? Something I think like so. that. Basically, and it's like yes, but not right now. So, does this mean we're gonna see like a Kevin Owens Rusev feud potentially? Because uh, I'm thinking the U.S. title is going to be tied up 
uh, in another feud that we might get into a little bit later. At least that I'm speculating. Or we could talk about it now. Yeah, I honestly I don't know where they're going with the Rusev I, thing. So uh, talk about it now. Whole, <laughs> so New Day basically wreaks havoc on Raw. Um, and it was Big E versus Cena. But of course, uh, all the shenanigans happen after Cena gets the win. Sad face. Because I was actually really hoping Big E would win. But uh, what I wanted to get to was there was uh, Ziggler super kicking Cena by accident. And some people are speculating that we could be getting like a Ziggler Cena feud for the U.S. title, uh, and the fact that it might coincide with this whole Total Divas thing. Have you guys heard about this? Yeah, have where he apparently made a move on. Have you seen that? Um, Ziggler was on Total Divas, which is another sub reality. It is not real. Um, what? That Ziggler was trying to get back with Nikki Bella and they used to date or something. And he's all like, I can give you the kids and the marriage that you want thing. And then I guess that's the end of the season, whatever season they're on of Total Divas. So some people are speculating that they're going to play that into Monday Night Raw in a John Cena Ziggler feud. Now I'll shut up and let you guys uh, discuss. So Ziggler is moving from one love story to another one is what you're saying. Guys, why do we do this? <laughs> why yeah, do we actually, do this to ourselves? Actually, how could they really incorporate that? <laughs> like, what? I, like, what is Lada in all of this? I just realized that. <laughs> I have. I don't know. I may actually be legitimately speechless right now. And I know I talk a lot. I talk a lot here, so I know that's uh, not normal. But what do you think, Keith? I'm in the same boat as you, buddy. Yeah, I don't, whether or not, I don't get it. Now, now that I really think about it, it makes me doubt that they'll incorporate Total Divas, but I still think we're heading down a Cena Ziggler US title road. Do you care about that, though? <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, Cena's going to be taking that sabbatical. Do you uh, care about allegedly. that, Allegedly. Allegedly. No. Well, he's definitely off for the European tour. We know that much. So there's a decent chance that Ziggler wins, but you can ask the but question again. But do you one. care about that, no. though? No! <laughs> there you I mean, go. I Ziggler is U.S. champion. We've seen that. He's won every mid-card title there is to win, so what? what's new? Okay, people, so obviously the conversation is deep and dark this episode, as it always tends to be, but we do want to get to a couple of announcements. As Mr. McNulty mentioned at the top of the show, we do have our WWE $60 digital gift card a certificate giveaway happening over at ByteThat.com forward slash WWE 2K16. The giveaway ends on October 20th, and the winner will be announced on the October 20th edition of the podcast. Now, if you want to be be able to share, if you want, if you... All right, you uh, can okay, do it. Words, I believe words, you can do it. Words. All right, you got this. Now, if you want to make sure you can get the certificate, you have to make sure that you can get a GameStop.com Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, or Amazon.co.uk gift certificate. And that is it. So just go to the website. A ton of cool stuff. And this Thursday, people. Part two of our Kane Superstar Spotlight. The first one got great reception, great feedback, a lot of great discussions over on the channel. So part two, we talk about... Kane becoming unmasked, feuding with Shane McMahon, corporate Kane, uh, Team Hell No Kane, all of that great stuff, and there's a cat across the screen. When is that going to happen? Just stay tuned. He's actually going to be there. Now, something to also take note, and make sure to follow us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash bite that. We are going to be having some cool things happening throughout the month of October, as well as pretty soon, part three of this Here Comes the Pain, Stevie Richards season mode. Ryan is going to keep doing that pretty soon, so keep an eye out on I that. I am. Part three coming, and maybe some spooky, scary skeletons. And they spooky, will shiver scary. down your spine. Yes. And this weekend, we are taking a little bit of a wrestling break, as on Saturday, you are going to Hashtag. be getting part one of my Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare playthrough. And on uh, Sunday, you get the second part. So you get to see a lot of games. I talk about some of my favorite shooters, why, why I like Call of Duty. Because obviously, as you can get from this episode, we got to sort of we got to sort of cool it down a little bit. So this is our way of literally doing that. <laughs> so let's uh, we, we, we took it down a notch, right? Guys, can we make a pact? What? 
Can we talk about happy things for a bit? Because I don't know how much more of this I can take. <laughs> well, the next topic was literally Cena taking a sabbatical. <laughs> well, we already kind of blew through that one, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, let's actually talk about some positive things. So, this yeah. Thursday, yeah. NXT TakeOver Respect. Keith, are you ready? Are you ready, I Keith? I am ready. I am willing to watch... And I am able to watch because I have the WWE Network for only nine ninety nine, and uh, I'm actually hyped for this uh, for this show solely on the concept of the Iron. Is it Iron Woman? Iron match Man. The, Iron Man. Are they still calling it Iron Man? But it's thirty minutes, right? Yes, it's yeah. a thirty minute. I'm going to call it Iron Woman match uh, between Sasha there's Banks actually, and Bailey. Uh, there's actually a quick article that uh, Triple H had a conference call today and talked about that. Lita is apparently. Uh, working full time in WWE apparently, and uh, she as actually as a trainer or a, as a production slash creative member. I, I, I just read that before the show, and she stated that the reason, and Triple H stated that she mentioned that the reason it's still Iron Man is because it would be demeaning for it to be Iron Woman because Iron Man is the name of the match. So by changing the name of the match, you're sort of like just saying, yeah, it's not that match. So I I, I get it. It's like if you're changing the name of a I battle guess. royal or a rumble because there's divas involved. It's still Which weird they, because we are used to that. Used to do, but yeah. So there is that. Uh, I'm just gonna run down the card. We're not gonna really, really do predictions. We're just gonna do some general hype. But matches that are confirmed: uh, Asuka will make her in-ring NXT debut against Dana Brooke. Apollo Cruz will take on Prince Pretty. We have our Prince Pretty Ryan, but NXT's is Tyler Breeze. Uh, the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic semifinals and finals will take place, uh, in which those are Finn Balor and Samoa Joe versus uh, Dash and Dawson, and Baron Corbin and Rhino will face the team of Jason Jordan and the future of WWE, Chad Gable. Other matches include, let's see here, uh, the main event, Bailey versus Sasha Banks. 30-minute Iron Man match for the NXT Women's Championship. Guys, are you hyped? Yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's great that there's wrestling that we can be legitimately excited about. Um, NXT TakeOver is always worth a watch, so um, I'm pretty pumped for it. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm, I'm finally caught up. I was delayed for about a month on NXT. Ryan's like eight months, but for me, it's uh, yeah, been about I've a month. Yeah, I've lost all hope. <laughs> I'm like... I just have to find a time to just start right after a takeover. Maybe maybe I'll just just start. You've been saying that with Lucha I Underground know, I know. since like summer of last year or, or a little bit afterwards. No, no. Whatever the hell I was it just was. say I didn't even live in Winnipeg when we started ragging you about uh, Lucha Underground. Well, yeah, Lucha Underground, but NXT. I was caught up until like this, pa- like about it, maybe uh, <laughs> say like it. December say last it. year is when it all fell off the map. Why? You realize next month is November, right? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So maybe it was close to a year ago. So why did I fall off with NXT? It has nothing to do with the show ever being bad. I think it was just that, you know, when it comes down to it after watching Raw, like sometimes I I was just like, oh, like I don't feel like watching wrestling. And I used to watch it on Thursdays uh, because it was a Thursday thing for a while, wasn't it? Yes, um, yeah. I know I can watch it whenever on the network, but like for nine ninety nine. Yeah, I don't know. I was just like I was kind of into the whole Thursday thing, and then like when they moved it, that kind of threw me off. And now it's like I I never even think to watch it, which is unfortunate. But I will always make sure to catch the takeover. Watch the show; it's so good. Just watch it. To be fair, and to kind of defend Ryan for a moment. We're at a point now where NXT isn't even the best thing on the network. They're, they're at a point where they're making awesome content. So if I'm going to sit down and watch the network, like I'm personally a few weeks behind on NXT as well. But that's because when I sit down to watch things on the network, I'm going to watch the tables for three. I'm going to watch the that's interviews very true. and stuff like that. So NXT is awesome, yes, but it's moved a bit down the line for me personally. And uh, I know you're a huge fan of it. WWE 24, last night they posted WWE 24 NXT, which I've yet to watch, but uh, I want to get your I feedback. I it was really, really good, and I, I still have to watch that. And I still have to watch the table for three. Uh, I know the 
I heard the Ryback, uh, Daniel Bryan one or whatever. Oh my god, hilarious. okay, yeah. real talk. If you are out there in listener land and haven't watched that, it is the funniest thing. I I literally bursted out laughing <laughs> at the end of that. There is an amazing story that involves Ryback, Brock Lesnar, and Cialis. It's the best. Those and hashtag my, Panera uh, Bread. To-do list. <laughs> the, the, the table for three, not, not what you just said. <laughs> not Brock Lesnar and Seattle. <laughs> yeah. And no staff infections, please. You'll find out they're in, in the table for three. But Keith, you made an excellent point there. The network, it's actually uh, coming down to uh, what to watch now. There's actually a large array of content. Like even today, I'm like, I want to watch 24, but tomorrow there's TakeOver. And honestly... You know, we, we do have a life. I want to take a, a, a little bit of a break. So it's perfectly understandable. Uh, that being said, take over once again. We want to look forward to your tweets. And we are going to be getting to a ton of great questions right now, which Keith will facilitate. That I will. I You can just call me the question master this week and all of the weeks beforehand. So let's get I to some questions. I can't go back in time, though. But if you could turn back time, if you could find I a way. Find a way. <laughs> You would do it. I know you would. We had a share <laughs> reference on this show. Woo. I know. It happened. We could, we could check that box now, guys. We did it. So, yeah, your questions. Let's get to those. You want to send them to us? Please do. Email. BiteThatCastGmail.com Twitter. YouTube. Wrestling Amino. Facebook. Places. Places. All of the internet places. Not all of them. We're probably on some not, not on some social medias. Bite that or bite that cast. You're a smart cookie. So you'll the questions. Out, you'll figure out which one we are on that. I know you will because you're a smart cookie. Much like Jack A, who sent us our first question of the show. And he asks, what was your favorite match of last year? His Team Cena versus Team Authority. That match was definitely up there for me. We actually had that as our agreed upon match of the year for our Bites Awards. Yeah, um, the, if the I awards could pick that I had no match, say on. <laughs> hmm? I don't think I got a vote on that, guys. Did, maybe you didn't. Maybe you were pushed out of the committee. I but, think uh, it was. The Bite That Bites Committee is uh, it's very strict. So maybe you, you did something wrong. We had to kick you out. Um, off the Probably. top of my head, it's... Uh, you guys got to help me out here because I'm just drawing a blank. Sure, I'll say mine. So mine, it's very tough for me to choose between these two, but it is either uh, Daniel Bryan versus Triple H from WrestleMania 31. Well, or you are in the wrong year. Wrong year, WrestleMania 30. Oh, wait, wait, actually last year. Wait, no, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I'm right. I'm sorry. I just said the wrong WrestleMania, so we're both wrong here. It's either that match, Daniel Bryan versus Triple H at WrestleMania 30, or Daniel Bryan versus Bray Wyatt from the Royal Rumble that year. Because holy guacamole, was that a good match. And it should have been our match of the year, by the way. <laughs> but I got kicked off the committee. <laughs> right, get him back on there. Talk to the committee, which is you. <laughs> so for me, I'm actually going to be going with an NXT match, Sami Zayn versus Cesaro from NXT arrival. Now they had two excellent matches, so you can probably ask me uh, next week, and then my answer will change to their other match uh, <laughs> because they're both so good. The two out of three falls, and then just the f standard match. But I love those two matches so much. I and think honestly, two out of three falls was 2013, though. Two, uh, two, was it? No, that can't be it. No, because well, the feud happened last was, year. Wasn't arrival at the very beginning of the year of 2014, leading because like it was one of the first things on the network. Which was like in the winter, and then WrestleMania 30 was the first thing on the network, right? The first pay per view. Yes. 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 Okay. So yeah, that. So, so there's no way that the match happened then. It, it was in 2013. I love those matches, and honestly, it's the matches I've rewatched the most. <laughs> uh, the most. Sorry, I had so. to get technical on you there. Yeah. Get technical. Yes, technical. I'm sticking with the authority Cena match because I I'm just drawing a blank on 2014. You're you're going way too far back now, and that sir is why they do not talk about things in the past in wrestling. So thank you for I'm, the question, I'm Mr. Jack. Mr. A. Right? No, no. And our next question comes from Commander Creative, who asks, "My buddy and I have been talking about this, and it's the craziest thing, but you should give it a thought." 
If WWE gave it a chance, do you think Stardust could be the top heel in the company? Remember at one point, R-Truth was. And this is not a knock against R-Truth because that heel run that he had where he was the top, he was great. Oh my God, it was great. Yeah. And I think the answer is absolutely yes because of that. R-Truth was an amazing heel. They did not continue on that and that's why that failed. But I do think that Stardust... He has the wrestling capabilities. He can talk on the microphone. He's an interesting character. He does have the Ascension, which are treated like a joke in WWE for the most part. But there is a stable that can easily have a purpose. And, I mean, we've seen him at the top of his game as a heel with Goldust. Yeah, I definitely think he could be. I've seen the the flashes of brilliance in his promos, and he's excellent in the ring. If they actually booked him seriously in the Ascension seriously, I think 100% that could be like a serious deal that people would actually be into and treat like a top heel. But the it's just that the booking for it has been treated like such a lower card thing that it would, it would take so much for that to be uh, taken as a high level thing at this point in time. But if it didn't have all that beforehand and it just came in like a top heel type of gimmick... I think it would have been more believable. I agree. And I also find it interesting how Stardust being like a top heel is almost like the counterpoint to your whole wrestler should be more real one. Because if Stardust were to be a top heel in my head, at least he should be like this, the cosmic villain that reigns tyranny all over the WWE, like play in to the character. And that's perfectly fine, but we should have... Either op, either part of the spectrum, not like the middle ground that we have right now. Either be oh, full on real or Commitment. be yeah, or be like freaking ridiculous. Yeah, like as long as they can make you believe, it's just nobody's. Not many people are that convincing. Like Bray Wyatt, you can actually believe in his character, just like you can the Undertaker. So even if it is a little out there, if you make people buy in, it it can work out. Believe. Yeah. So what you're telling me is Bo Dallas is the greatest thing in wrestling history. Yes. Yep. yep. All right. So our next question comes in from J4 Gaming, who asks, it's a bit of a doozy. It's a deep one. In an one. alternate universe, say we're in the cosmic wasteland, this alternate universe, our channel swapped popularity our channel, youtube.com forward slash bite that cast, cha- er, swapped popularity with PewDiePie. You know PewDiePie. PewDiePie. The most what? subscribed to channel on YouTube. Yes. A man much richer than us. What do you think bite that would be like? Okay. So what would the channel be like? Well, if we were that popular, we would be doing pretty well off. So I would think that our production value would skyrocket, that all of us would devote our full time to doing it considering it would be a more than satisfactory revenue stream for us um (laughs) i would assume that we'd all kind of relocate somewhere so that we could work together more closely and we would just be full time doing the channel whatever content uh got us that popularity i assume so whether that's uh more wrestling talk or whatever that was a real serious answer (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, I agree completely. Just key examples. I think the podcast would be a video podcast every week. Uh, we would definitely have more consistent even daily videos, of course. I mean, uh, I think... Why do I, I feel like this is a commercial or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, because... If you believe in Bite That, we can achieve great things. Anything can happen. But I do think uh, that type of we potential... We would sell out. Yeah, no. Uh, we would buy in. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Man, you guys are killing my, my mojo. All right, go ahead. Go to All right, 10. Raleigh, go. <laughs> no, I, I just say like, uh, I, I think having, <laughs> I think good, having an opportunity like that or something helps legitimately not because of the money. I mean, obviously the money helps not have any sort of stress on like, uh, you know, you don't need another work or something, but just you can comfortably make the content you want to do. And I think that's what PewDiePie has been trying to do. And a lot of people have been hating on him. Because he's been more himself and less outrageous for some stuff. But, I mean, he's already done the other stuff. Might as well let him be a little bit more of himself. I mean, he was even interviewed by Stephen Colbert last week. So, yeah. he's definitely reaching out. Absolutely. We wouldn't disable yeah. comments like him either, though. Ah, uh, you know. 
Keith would. Maybe. Keith totally would. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, like you said, Juan, all jokes aside, I think he does some great things. And I actually do have a fair amount of respect for him for uh, doing what he does and then doing it his way. So I think that's uh, admirable. And I think if we were that big, there would be an at least a 300% increase in hookers and blow. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I Those words are in my head. I need to fit it in somewhere. <laughs> okay, so next question. <laughs> next question <laughs> comes from Jago C. And he asks, where should... I, I don't know why I went into this like weird sexy voice. <laughs> What's the C hookers, asks, man? It must be. But Jago C asks, where should the WWE take Roman Reigns following his feud with the Wyatts? And I think the answer to this is simply all the way straight to the top. Top floor. Hmm. Roman yeah. Reigns, uh, maybe, maybe he feuds with Dean Ambrose. You know, they could do something where Ambrose turns heel. Although, if Ambrose turns heel, everyone's going to cheer for Ambrose, I think. So... That's that's a tough feud unless Reigns is turning heel, but I think they're trying to build him up to be a big baby face. So, I don't know. I still feel like Ambrose is a good feud, though. Yeah, I think it's going to end up being Ambrose Reigns, and we are going to be seeing the Shield triple threat match at WrestleMania for the title. I think that should be the match, and uh, I think Reigns should be the bad guy in here. Because if Rollins can remain a the top bad guy, he can beat Rollins at Mania and hopefully get over. Obviously, that's what they tried le- this year with Brock Lesnar and all that, and it didn't really work out. But I think the crowd is at a point where they would support that. And once again, I am awaiting the hateful comments. Yeah, see, I think they should go right into starting to build or plant the seeds for that shield triple threat. Like we're almost at survivor series, start having Rollins and Reigns go at it and have them like maybe Rollins or maybe trade the title back and forth a little bit. Like maybe Rollins wins the first one and then Reigns wins and then Sheamus cashes in and then Reigns or then Reigns beats Sheamus. And then all of a sudden we're getting close to WrestleMania. Maybe Rollins or Ambrose wins the Royal rumble. And then you lead to the shield triple threat at WrestleMania. Like, that has to be. Keith the booked event, it. That's right, it. Guys. Yeah. Well, just do it. that. Put a stamp on it. We're done. So thank you for the question. Our next question comes from Nick. Just simply Nick. Who asks, when was the last time you were happy, a.k.a. like cheering, jumping, screaming in front of your TV for someone winning a match? That is actually, uh, well, maybe not jumping, but... Definitely cheering and like standing up when uh, Rollins cashed in at WrestleMania 31 yep. for sure. Because um, I thought there was n- no chance that anyone but Roman Reigns was walking out with that title. So that was a, a pleasant surprise. For me, that was the second answer. The most recent one is Sasha um, and uh, versus Bailey and then Bailey winning the championship. That I, I just loved it. I actually got emotional. But that was more of like get up in front of your TV and start clapping at your television. Well, like, but he yeah. does say cheering, jumping, screaming in front of the TV. I was cheering and I, I screamed. Did you in cry? front of the TV? Well, I mean, I was technically in front of my monitor, so technically, I can't do all of that. But I did do at least fifty percent. Commitment one. It's a real thing. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> then uh, Rollins. Yeah, Rollins easily. I was um, I was watching WrestleMania with some friends, and then the second his music hit, I'm like, oh god! It was really reminiscent of when uh, Edge cashed in on mm. uh, John Cena during uh, the first Money in the Bank. One of my all time favorite moments. Mm-hmm. But it was that moment, like, oh, something, something's about to happen. Oh, Houston, feel the power! <laughs> uh, and, Owens uh, beating Cena was close to that reaction. It was close, but not indeed. not compared to Rollins cashing in. Yeah, no, that, that's a special moment. Very special. So thank you for the question. Our next one comes from BPOE131, who asks, If you guys were a wrestler, what would your finisher be? You get one. What would it be? It would have to be the golden elbow. You know, if, if you watch Fight Night, you've seen Steve Shavinsky do it. It's, it's a devastating maneuver. 
that uh, Wade Bear ripped off from me. I invented it first, so I would use it. It's going to sound like so much finite pandering, but for me would probably be the dandy T. The reason the reason I gave him that, his moveset is based on how I would hypothetically wrestle. So if you want to know how I would wrestle, watch a fight night match with Dandy. And then realize if Juan actually did it, it wouldn't be nearly as good. Yeah, I will pay you $100 oh. to do a good Dandy T and record it. Noted. Like Me and Juan, let's get in the ring. Let's settle this. <laughs> Exactly. As, as a GM, I commission this match. I sanction it. I'll bump for you. Oh, Let's yeah, do it. you will. Ooh, yeah. Bump for him. Yeah. But what, what is wrong with Keith, Keith today? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm in a mood. Keith, um, you should. Yeah, go on. Go on. No. So, cutters. I really like cutters. I've always been uh, a fan of them, and I would have some form of cutter. Probably lean more towards. The, of the diamond variety and a diamond cutter and uh i'd use that as my finisher all right i was worried you were talking about shooting yourself earlier than cutters, <laughs> cutters. so i just want to make sure it was a wrestling move we talking and he's about. like a horny he's like what's going on yeah like i said i'm in a mood no my my finisher would be just listening to a bunch of like system of a down and cradle of filth and hating my life it would be a real great move how could this <laughs> happen to me I made him. Go on. All right. I've got nowhere to run and the night goes on because our next question comes from Cody Collier, who asks, what do you think is the most underrated and overrated moment in Survivor Series history and why? Most underrated gobbledygooker. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Somebody else go, please. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. This is a tough one. I think a legitimate match. I mean, I watched it this weekend, and I I don't think people talk about Shane McMahon enough. Is Shane McMahon versus Kane? That match was way better than I I remember it being, and I think it was something that was very personal. Shane gets often overlooked because he's not a wrestler. He's a McMahon that wrestled. And that's something where, honestly, if I had to choose between a bunch of other matches and telling people to go watch a Shane McMahon match, I would choose that any day of the week. Yeah. I mean, if you're going with Shane McMahon matches, you got a heck of a repertoire to choose from, really. Yeah. Angle, that match. For underrated, I would have to say the match that you actually brought up earlier, Juan, and that's the... uh, Stone or Team Austin versus Team Bischoff match. I don't think that match gets mentioned a lot. And that's a that is a hell of a match. If you haven't gone back and watched that, I think it's worth more than a watch. I don't know what that is, but it's worth more than it. And I think another really good underrated moment is uh it weirdly doesn't get brought up a lot, but the Elimination Chamber the first match was at Survivor Series. Oh, that's like that, right. That match originated at Survivor Series. That's something that doesn't really get brought up for whatever reason. Overrated? Can we just say Montreal Screwjob? Yep. Yes. Because honestly... Thank you for bailing me out because I couldn't yeah. think. <laughs> <laughs> no, because honestly, that's what people always bring up when they talk about Survivor Series. And it wasn't good. I mean... We get all the backstage well, stuff that it, led to it. It kind of affected, like, everything. The Montreal screw job changed the course of history, but I don't think it should get as much of, like, a platform as it does. Like, is it something that we really need to always bring up all these years later? And I don't think the answer is yes. Obviously, we, yeah. we got I mean, a character out of Vince just, McMahon. Yeah. Yeah, just because of how blown up it is. But it's we can't take away the fact that it was still very important. Absolutely. So, thank you for the question, sir. Our next one comes in from NKBE1324, who asks, Do you think the Dudleys will ever be bad wrestlers? They look as good as they did 15 to 20 years ago. And to that, I say, sir, you should go back and watch some Dudley matches circa 2003, 2004. They aren't good. (laughs) Yeah, and honestly, I think that the Dudley boys complement themselves very well. 
But when we did get to see a lot of their singles careers as Reverend Devon and just Bubba Ray, that did not go well. Of course, don't get the pitchforks. Bully Ray is a complete exception to the rule. Sadly, we will not see that in WWE. But I do think that time frame between 2002, 2004, it was rough. But even not not to just crap all over the Dudley boys, but even when they were a team, like when they were facing La Resistance and the Un-Americans and stuff, they felt like they were coasting, like they were just on Raw and okay, that's kind of it. It was nothing special yeah, because during that time. A lot of the repertoire, WWE, you know, they didn't just have table matches every week and a lot of the things that they were known for, they couldn't just do every week. So it was just two guys that wrestled and then what? Yeah, and uh, as far as do I think they'll ever be bad wrestlers, at least in the future? (laughs) Yeah, that's not outdated at all. Um, I think that they're going to hang up the boots before they get to any point where uh, where we feel like they're bad. Yeah, agreed. So thank you, sir, for the question. Our next one comes in from the true prince of pro. And he asks... He understands that we usually only cover the world of the WWE, but he has a TNA question this week. Are you guys ready for that? Yeah. I'm going to try, man. Okay. Do you think that the the TNA, do you think that TNA put the final nail in its own coffin on Sunday because at Bound for Glory, they made Matt Hardy the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. I almost said the TNA WWE World Heavyweight Champion. But, <laughs> well, they made anyway. him the champion, not the championship. He didn't turn into the title. He <laughs> well, won thank the you, title. Sir. Thank you, sir. But anyway, Matt Hardy, champion. He beat Drew Galloway and EC3. For True Prince, this is the final straw. He's no longer watching TNA. How could they trade their greatest star in EC3 for old man Matt Hardy? It's like the WWE making Kane champion over the younger, more exciting Seth Rollins. He's really just sad for what happened at Bound for Glory. So he's really hoping that this podcast makes him feel better. Man. (laughs) Man, Yeah, this episode. We should have read that earlier. (laughs) Anyway. Um, Let's see. TNA. Matt Hardy is champion. I think it's fine. I mean, EC3 is still like their best new star. But, I don't know, they're going through a rough patch right now at TNA, and that's like an understatement. An understatement um, of the year. Yeah, goes they're trying too. to find a TV deal, and maybe they just want a more recognizable champion. I mean, let's be real. EC3, as amazing as he is, is not known probably by any by most casual wrestling fans. But some of them might be able to recognize Matt Hardy because of how popular the Hardy Boys were during the Attitude Era. That might be their logic, and, you know, he can't, they can't always have EC3, you know, being champion or whatever. So, I'm I'm just thinking they're trying to have one of their bigger names uh, with more mainstream appeal. Yeah, that's probably exactly why, and that's the sad part of wrestling, where at the end of the day, it's a TV show, and TV shows need advertisement and a, a channel for that matter. And obviously, if you put a guy like EC3 next to a guy like Matt Hardy, They won't recognize one of the two, but the other one, they will go, hey, I watched the TLC matches from like 30 years ago, Uh, over-exaggerating, but you get the point. (laughs) So if they are trying to market themselves, that is the best way to go. Now, now, historically, TNA has not really done the best with that because you've had Kurt Angle, you've had Jeff Hardy, you've had Sting, you've had a ton of guys where you could do the exact same thing. Matt Hardy, if anything, is like at the bottom of the barrel with that. You had Christian at one point, which was at about the same level. You made the guy the champion, but you didn't really market yourself any differently. So I think that Matt Hardy is probably the best option right now, but you had Bully Ray also. So it's all these things, and Matt Hardy just happens to be the next guy. Will anything change? Uh, Dixie will probably have another big major announcement happening next week. And then the week after, and then 
we'll, we'll keep going. Bram will get a new deal at some point. Well, Bram has uh, seen better days. I think domestic violence <laughs> sort of put a stop oh, to that. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot about oh, that God. one. But uh, oh Jesus. Well, Christ. not that that's a laughing matter. <laughs> no, so, we're laughing at we're laughing there, at Bram. my uh, at my poo poo of a mistake there. How I totally forgot about that. But for years. I have made the comparison between WCW and TNA, how TNA over the years has become a modern day WCW. A far more underwhelming WCW. Yes, but a WCW nonetheless. And this just seems like another one of those things. Replace Matt Hardy with Kevin Nash and oh boy, you've got the the old WWE slash F guy winning the major belt. I think you're the first person to ever compare Matt Hardy to Kevin Nash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. So yeah, TNA. TNA better is days. resilient as hell, though. I'll, I'll give him that. TNA is I a cockroach think, yeah, more than anything. Nobody thought they'd still be around at this point, but they're, they are hanging in there. Indeed. Such so a great thing you. to hear about a company. You're hanging know, in right? there. You're hanging in there. <laughs> Yeah, just keep on trucking, TNA. What's that poster with the cat that's like it just hang, in, hang there? in there? Yeah, that's our message, TNA. But True Prince, thank you for the question. And our final question of this week's show comes from Cam B. First of all, Cam B says, "What up?" So guys, What's I refuse. Nope. Right. We're not. We're Ryan. not moving on. This is the one gimmick I won't play into. Ryan. Ryan, I'm stopping the car. No. Say what's Ryan. up. Just say go it. to the question. Say I'll what's read up. It. I will read the question. <laughs> okay. With Seth Rollins as current world champ, Reigns 99.9% will be a world champ, and Ambrose may, may well be a world champ in the future. What world champs from the past would you compare to these three guys? So I guess Edge and Rollins is uh, the obvious first comparison, at least for me. With Ambrose, I guess the closest would be Stone Cold, realistically. I don't know anybody else that I would compare him to. that's so weird to me, though. Yeah, but who else would you? I mean, because you can't really count Brian Pillman. He's the logical wrestler of an answer, but not world champion. And with Reigns, uh, I don't know. That That one's interesting. I made the previous comparison. It's not, it's not, it's kind of close, but not exact with, oh, Seth Rollins is Triple H, Reigns is The Rock, and Ambrose is Stone Cold. And you can see some parallels, but it's not, not super close. Um, But I definitely get an Edge and Jeff Hardy-ish vibe from Seth Rollins. Reigns is uh, a bit tougher to compare someone to. I would, say Ed, I would say Reigns is like an early Triple H, not Hunter Hearst Helmsley, but early Triple H where, you know, you're not you're not there yet. There's something being worked on with this DX thing, but it wasn't until Hunter Hearst Helmsley, uh, Stephanie McMahon Helmsley era that he really gloomed into the game. Yeah, that's so interesting because I have such different options and I thought we would all be really close on this. But Seth Rollins is Shawn Michaels. He's nobody outperforms him on the big on the big stage. Hell of an attitude. You know, there's there's uh, there just, is little well, he's differences. He's getting himself into trouble, but he's just not bleeding the same charisma that Michaels does. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But I don't know. I think it's that's closer to like a triple H or an, he's got a hell of a dating resume, though. No kidding. And both of them have showed up mostly naked in pictures. Well, so not both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Both of them have posed nude, one intentionally, one unintentionally. Let's just say William Regal has a challenger. <laughs> yeah. Are you the only person that still remembers slash thinks of that? Don't answer that question. Roman Reigns is the rock. Like, it's this. it's the easy comparison, but it's the most real comparison. Like, think about how Roman Reigns became this clean baby face and then the fans just rejected him. And then, uh, whatchamacallit, that happened with The Rock. We have Die, Rocky, Die. We know that whole story. We all know Roman Reigns is going to be champion one day. How crazy is it that, what like, what happens if Roman Reigns just never becomes champion and it's just the most ridiculous thing in wrestling history? That'll be that, something. It's hard to believe that that, would happen at this point. Yeah, Doubtful. I don't believe that. And 
I think the uh, the Brian Pillman comparison for Ambrose is I think it's a fair one because okay, real talk. I think there's a chance that you Dean Am- the hashtag hashtag real talk. I think there's a chance that Dean Ambrose goes his whole career without winning the major title. Agreed. Well, screw you guys, because I said Ambrose was going to be champion before Reigns, so suck it. I know, and I think you're wrong. (laughs) I think there is a chance. Realistically, I think there's a chance, but I could easily see him being... uh, Saying there's a chance. Yeah, there's a chance, but realistically, (laughs) if out of the three, one of them had to never be champion, let's be honest, Ryan, who would it be? Oh, well, I mean, Rollins is already champion, so... Yeah, no, let's be real here. Ambrose. And I there think Brian Pillman is one of the greatest performers to be in the WWE slash F that never won the championship. So I think that comparison is totally legit. And I would compare Ambrose closest to Brian Pillman. Yes, yeah, so we got a ton of great questions this week. Make sure to keep them coming. Bite that cast at Gmail. Dot com and then uh, you will continue to hear Keith's soothing voice. So for everything else, there's MasterCard. But then after that, somewhere very deep down in a corner is Ryan McNulty. That's right, Ari. We want to thank everyone for yeah. tuning into another super exciting, like dark episode of the Bite That podcast. But we got some stuff to talk about before you go. go. All right. We got some stuff going on, all right? We got a YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash bite that cast. Have you hit the subscribe button? Jesus, will you just push that button already? You're killing me, man. Push, push Seriously, the button. Seriously, if you haven't, let's, let's, let's be real here, all right? Part two. Part two. Part two. Two of our superstar. Can you, uh, can you pop those peas a little more? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm blowing this thing up. <laughs> okay, part two of our Kane superstar spotlight is going up Thursday. Part uh, two. Yeah, it, it was a hell no of a one. part two. I'm telling you. All right, it beats the Godfather part two. That's how good it is. Okay. So definitely watch that. Juan's going to have his Call of Duty videos up Saturday and Sunday. You get part two on Sunday. That's part part two. two. (laughs) Okay. And then, you know, we got some social media. Twitter, Bite That Cast. Facebook, forward slash Bite That Cast. Wrestling Aminos, Bite That. Instagram's Bite That. For everything else, you can go to BiteThat.com. And do not forget to go to BiteThat.com slash WWE. 2K16 to enter your chance for a $60 gift card uh, towards WWE 2K16, uh, GameStop, or Amazon, and make sure it, you can get it from a .com, .ca, or .co.uk address to be eligible. I'm going to get the hell out of here. I need to shut up. Thank you guys for listening. And we we'll be will back see you next week, week with part two. Part Bye. two. Bye. Not one. <laughs>